There's been an awakening. Have you felt it? Welcome back my friends, after months of wiping out wave after wave of Vex invaders, season 8 comes to a close, it's now time to look to the future. Season 9, Season of Dawn. There are some big changes coming to Destiny when this new season launches in December. The almighty dominant One-Eyed Mask is getting nerfed, as well as the ubiquitous Recluse. Xenophage on the other hand is getting buffed. Other changes include the ability to stack mods and some major tweaks to solar subclasses. But before we look at these in more detail, we still have some unfinished business in Season 8 to take care of. So let's go take care of it. So then, after weeks of eager anticipation, Ikora finally built her goddamn portal. At last, players could take on the Vex Offensive Final Assault to the concluding piece of content from Season 8. Using the finished portal to summon the Undying Mind from thousands of different timelines, Guardians launched a collective assault on this formidable Vex Hydra to secure the Black Garden and contain the Vex incursion on the moon. Sounds bloody fantastic, right? Well, it wasn't. It was a shit. For starters, Ikora's tower portal doesn't seem to actually do anything. It feels like a PC without internet connection. Pointless. The final assault is basically Vex offensive with a new end boss that you launch from the director. The Undying Mind appears through the portal and then you kill it. That's it. The first time you take it out, you get a new emblem. And the third time you kill it, you get a triumph which you need if you want this season seal. And yeah, that's it. No new weapons or armor, no cutscene, nothing of any note. It simply wasn't the satisfying conclusion many had hoped for. Now what players did hope for was that upon completion, the tower portal would fizz into life, opening a gateway into the Black Garden that Guardians could pass through and face the Undying Mind in a new strike. And wouldn't it be amazing if this strike had a unique weapon that could be farmed, just like the Imago loot from Destiny 1's Undying Mind strike. Alas, no such luck. Now before we go full on pitchfork mode, it's worth pointing out what Bungie said way back in August. By the end of Season 8, the portals will close, the world state will change, and the seasonal activity connected to it, in this case Vex Offensive, will go away. Yet something remains. This will be just in time for something to kick off the start of Season 9, Season of Dawn. And now we fast forward to Bungie's latest blog post. Ikora finished her construction project, closed out all the permits, and Guardians launched an attack on the Undying Mind. The impact of your victory has not been made clear just yet, but in time, you'll learn more about how this will further evolve the world as we transition into the next season. So yeah, keep your eyes peeled. It looks as though Season 8 may have one last trick up its sleeve as it leads into Season 9. Next up, we have the final Iron banner of Season 8. The game mode is Control. It starts Tuesday, November 26th and ends Tuesday, December 3rd. This is your last chance to earn Iron Banner Pinnacle rewards before the season ends. And get this, Bungie also teased that an old Iron Banner armor set from Destiny 2 will return in Season 9. Now guys, as you can see, I have completed Iron Banner bounties from the last Iron Banner. And if you didn't already know by now, Pinnacle Gear now gives you plus 2 power instead of plus 1 power. So let's just open these and see what I get. Abu Yaxi to the Shaxi. Let's just blast through these and then we can infuse them if needs be. Okay, we got the helmet. What else have we got here? We've got the cloak too. So let's see what they dropped at. Okay, so I infused all my Iron Banner Pinnacle drops into my current gear and it boosted me from 966 power to 967 power. Nice. Now guys, heads up. Season 8 ends December 10th. So here's a quick check list of all the stuff you may want to complete before it's too late. First up, Season 8 Quests. After December 10th, these will be removed from your inventory, so get them done. Next up, Season of the Undying Triumphs. As you can see, the Triumphs needed to complete the Undying Seal are only available during Season 8. If you haven't completed all these Triumphs before December 10th, the Undying Seal will be lost forever. So then, what about Season 8 Exotics and Ritual Weapons? Well, I tweeted Bungie this. Will all Season 8 Exotics and Ritual Weapons be available after Season 8 ends? To which Community Manager DMG replied, Ritual Weapons and Exotics will be fine. So yeah, don't panic, these weapons won't permanently disappear after Season 8. So then, what else will be Thanos snapped out of existence when Season 8 ends? Well, for starters, Vex Offensive. So yeah, farm this activity while you still can. Next up, your Seasonal Artifact, along with all its mods and your Power Bonus, will also be saying Hasta La Vista, baby. The new Season will have a brand new Artifact and a whole new set of Seasonal mods to grind out. Like I said, your Artifact's Power Bonus will also reset to zero, so back you go to the Bounty Grind, Malado. And I only 
just realized this thing also has a lore tab. Oops. And finally, we have seasonal rank rewards. After December 10th, they too will disappear. The new season will have another 100 ranks to unlock. So then, what better way to see out season 8 than a big old engram opening session? Let's do this. So then, I'm going to collect all my nostalgic engrams so that we can open them up later on with Tess. Let's just blast through these. I also have some exotics. Let's see what this is. Let's go. A Booyaxi. We got the Queen Breaker. Haven't seen that in quite a while. So let's just continue with the old collection of the nostalgic engrams. Like I said, we will open these a little bit later on with Tess. Let's just blast through these. We've got one last exotic to open. The last seasonal exotic of Season 8. Let's do this. Abu Yaxi to the Shaxi. We've got Oathkeeper. And the final nostalgic engram. Let's now go and open those with Tess Everis. Right then, you know the drill. Let's blast through these and see what old Year 2 loot I get. Okay, what's first on the list? we got a bit of Bright Dust. What else have we got? We've got, oh, the Soros Chrome. I actually need that so that's 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 unexpected this is really going slow as well check out how hideous this looks on console we also got praxic finery i actually needed that too so this is actually quite good i wasn't actually expecting to get stuff that i needed from year two but there you go and like i said the slowdown on this is horrific i've already got the rust punk shell the last one is what is it it's blind faith weapon ornament and i do, i actually needed that too so that's not a bad loot haul for me and just in case you were curious i finally got my monte carlo to drop from good old lord shaxi poo nice one and check it out something that has never actually happened to me before in destiny i got an exotic to drop from a random patrol chest has that ever happened to you guys let me know in the comment section below it must be goddamn rare Okay then, so let's now talk about those Season 9 changes in more detail. One-Eyed Mask is getting yet another nerf to its Vengeance perk. Currently, when an enemy damages you, they become a marked target. Killing that target buffs your damage, regens your health, and grants an overshield. This latest nerf will remove the overshield buff. It's a significant change for sure, but having said that, One-Eyed Mask will no doubt remain the go-to PvP exotic for Titans. It's just that good. Next up, Recluse, which is arguably one of the best weapons in Destiny's history. Lethal in both PvP and PvE, Recluse has taken up permanent residence in players' energy slot. So how's Bungie tweaking this gun? Well, the Master of Arms perk, which buffs this weapon's damage after any kill, is getting nerfed. Currently, this perk grants a meaty damage buff no matter where you hit your target, body or crit spot, so you can just spray away without really having to aim. In Season 9, you'll have to hit crit spots if you want that same meaty damage buff. Now, body shots will still grant additional damage when Master of Arms is active, just not as much damage as hitting those crits. Again, even with this nerf, Recluse will no doubt remain a formidable weapon. You'll just need to aim more carefully when the Master of Arms perk is active. As for Xenophage, well, it's getting a much-needed buff. In its current state, it's straight-up garbage. In Season 9, this gun receives a 50% damage buff in PvE, and in PvP, you'll get more heavy ammo from timed crates. Next up, we're going to talk about how Bungie is tweaking Season 9's armor and mods. You see, Bungie Bungie has received a lot of feedback regarding Armor 2.0. By far the most frequent complaint was how the elemental type of your armor, Solar Void or Arc, determines which kind of mods you can equip in it. For example, Solar Armor allows you to equip Auto Rifle, Fusion Rifle, Linear Fusion Rifle and Submachine Gun Reserves mods. These are mods that allow you to carry more ammo for these specific weapon types. Well, starting in Season 9, Bungie will introduce ammo reserves and ammo finder mods that can be used no matter what armor energy type you have, giving you more freedom when tinkering with your build. Builds, and these mods will be automatically unlocked for all players at the start of Season 9. And here's another Season 9 Armor 2.0 change. You'll be able to stack identical mods in one armor piece. For example, to rocket launch your ammo finder mods in your helmet. It's worth noting that two stacked mods won't simply double the benefit of the mod. Instead, it will increase it by roughly 1.5 times. Next up, Bungie's making some major changes to three solar subclasses in Season 9. In some cases, completely changing entire perks. That's right, the studio is turning up the heat so you can get real sweaty and melt your enemies. Fire puns. So then, here are some of the most notable solar subclass changes coming in Season 9. First up, the Hunter's Way of the Sharpshooter. Two brand new perks have been created for this subclass. The new Weighted Knife perk is a super fast, super lethal throwing knife that can one-hit kill in PvP if you get a headshot. And get this, precision shot kills also completely recharge this melee. It actually sounds really cool. Or should I say, really hot. Okay, I'll definitely stop now. Sorry. Next up, the new Knock Them Down perk, which increases weapon stability and aim down sight speed when you score a precision kill. Now, I actually really like this. So then this buff lasts 10 seconds, but you can max it out to 25 seconds if you keep scoring precision final blows. Now, if you cast your super when this buff is above 20 seconds, the buff turns in 
into extra super damage. Sadly, this does not stack with Celestial Nighthawk. Next up, we have the Titan's Code of the Devastator, which, according to Bungie, is becoming way more competitive in PvP. The Roaring Flame Perk now does more bonus damage and lasts longer. Burning Maul also lasts longer, so you now have more time to plan how you'll crush your enemy's skulls when your super is active. And get this, your super's ground slam will also detonate when it detects enemies above it, so they won't simply be able to jump over you when they see you coming. Nasty. Plus, your lovely little throwing hammer is now super lethal in PvP when Roaring Flames is active, and you don't need to be as close to pick it up if it falls to the ground. And finally, we have the Warlock's Attunement of Sky, which Bungie now describes as a flying angel who can maneuver with grace and destroy its foes below. All the perks of this subclass have been tuned to help you dominate in the sky. The Heat Rises perk consumes your grenade to extend glide time and increase in air weapon accuracy, so more floaty shooty action. Wing Sun allows for mid-air melee attacks to grant melee energy and extend the duration of your Heat Rises perk, and you can now perform two mid-air dodges thanks to the improved Icarus Dash perk. Plus, the brand new Celestial Fire Melee sends out a spiral of three explosive solar projectiles, which sounds painful. Bungie also teased that it's tuning some non-solar subclasses too, so stay tuned for that. And speaking of teases, have a look at this. When asked if they have plans to make crossplay happen, Bungie actually responded by saying this. Crossplay is definitely something we're interested in exploring more in the future. So yeah, Bungie casually dropping those low-key bombshells. And yeah, I think that'll do it for this video. So then, Season 8 ends December 10th and a new season awaits. So guys, I want to ask you this. Did you enjoy Season of the Undying and are you looking forward to Season of Dawn? Leave your comments below and let me know. Now, as we approach the new season, I'll be back on the video grind, regular content to keep you updated with everything that's going on. So if you haven't already done so, now's a great time to subscribe and turn on notifications. And if you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up will help it get seen by more people and let me know that you like this kind of content. Thank you so much for watching and we'll speak again very soon.